Last time we finally got our player actually moving around in the scene, not just forward but also sideways, so now we can actually take control of our little cube. But there was still one big problem at the end of that video, and that was that the camera stayed in place and didn't actually follow the cube at all. And we're gonna fix that today. Normally, camera movement wouldn't be cause for its own entire video, but because of the way we've set up our player, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than it normally would be. The reason our camera is going to be a little bit more difficult to set up this time is because our cube here isn't actually a character or pawn. It's literally just an actor blueprint like any other actor blueprint would be in our scene. Our cube here isn't necessarily quote unquote a player. We've just made it so that we can control it. So in a normal circumstance, we would have come down here, created a blueprint class, and we would have created a character or a pawn, but we would have a little bit less control over the movement type that we set up. This method for creating a player is better for this type of game, but in most scenarios would not be the common way to set it up. Which also means that we can't just do what I would normally do to set up a player, which would be come over here, open up our blueprint, come over here to our viewport, and add a few components. Normally I would add a spring arm, so we could extend the camera out a little ways, and then I would add a camera to the spring arm. As you can see, the camera is parented to the spring arm here. And then maybe we would push this back to something like 550 and up 210 or something. Thing, and there we go. But you'll notice an immediate problem with this. If I just go ahead and come over here, click on our main camera in our scene, and remove this auto activation for player and set it to disabled, if we play, we're not following the player at all. In fact, the camera is just not being used. And our normal solution to this would be to just go back into our player here, select our camera, and tell it to auto activate for player. And you'll notice that even if we search for it here, auto activate, the only auto activation is already enabled, and it's not working. We can't define that we want to auto activate for player zero. The reason for this, I'm actually not 100% sure. My best guess would be that this player is not a pawn and cameras cannot be enabled for non pawns. So what we're going to have to do is we can leave the spring arm, but we're going to close this blueprint here and we're actually going to turn our main camera into its own blueprint because this camera by itself can auto activate for player zero. In fact, we're going to set that back to player zero right now. So make sure you have your main camera selected. Come over here to the right in the details panel and click blueprint slash add script so we can turn this into an actor blueprint as well. I'm going to rename this to BP underscore main camera. It's also going to be a new subclass and the camera actor will be the parent. And there we go. That's all we need to do. We don't need to set up anything in here, at least not yet. We can if we'd like to later, but for now we don't need to do anything in here. We can simply close this. What you may think to do initially before we even create this blueprint is just to drag our camera onto our player and parent it. But you'll see very quickly why this does doesn't work. As soon as we fall, we're still following the rotation of the player, and that's not what we want. We want this camera to keep following the player, but never change its rotation. Let's go ahead and remove this main camera and just parent it back to itself and not have it connected to the player here. Let's open up our player again, come back to our viewport, and over here at the spring arm, we're just going to select this and then add a new component, and this will be a child actor component. And you'll see why this works in just a second, but this is definitely a much different way of setting up up a character than we would normally do. I'm going to rename this to main camera and then I'm going to come over to the right here the details panel and under child actor component we have child actor class. I'm going to click this drop down here and I'm going to search for main camera. We're going to select our BP underscore main camera that we created just a few seconds ago. Now our camera pops up in our scene here connected to the end of the spring arm just like it was when we just added a camera normally. But this camera is actually its own blueprint and if we compile this and close this and open our blueprint for the main camera here, we can see immediately that it says auto activate for player zero, unlike it did with a regular camera before. So now we have two main cameras in our scene though. We can go ahead and delete our main camera that's just sitting by itself, and we can leave our main camera that's connected to the player. And now if we hit play, you can see we're following the player, but we still follow the rotation of the player no matter what. So let's open up our player again here. Our spring arm here was a little bit high. We can bring this down to something like 150. To make sure our camera doesn't follow the rotation of the cube, we're going to make sure we have our spring arm selected selected here, and under camera settings here, we're going to disable inheriting pitch, yaw, and roll, which are the proper terms for X, Y, and Z in terms of rotation. We're going to disable all three of these, compile that, close this blueprint, and now if we play, you can see even if we fall off the edge, our cube is still freely rotating. And you can see this better if we just go ahead and focus on our player here by pressing F on the keyboard, dragging in a cube here, maybe making this a little bit larger, making it into a wall or something. If we now bump into it, you can see our camera 
camera does not follow the rotation of the player. And you may see there that there's a random sphere in the scene, and this is gonna bug me, and it's probably gonna bug you, but don't worry, there's a very simple fix for this. If we come down here to our content browser, we can right click, create a new blueprint class, and this is gonna be of type game mode base or game mode, either one is fine. Select that, and we're gonna call this GM underscore player. And if we double click on this game mode, it's gonna bring up an entirely new blueprint editor, but don't worry, we don't need to look at anything in the viewport here. We just need to select our game mode player over here on the left in the components, and under classes over here in the details panel, we're going to simply change default pawn class to none, because by default, it was default pawn, and that creates this little player sphere in the scene that will fly around, and we don't wanna see that ever. So we can change that to none, because we don't actually have a pawn class to use. We can compile this and close this, and by default, that's not actually gonna do anything, so we need to come up here to window, world settings, and under game mode override, we're going to change this to our new GM underscore player. And now, no matter what, there will never be a random sphere showing up in our scene. Back to the camera, if we open up our player here, you can do one more thing here in the viewport. You can select our spring arm, and we can come over here to lag. And there are a few different options here. Enable camera lag, enable camera rotation lag, and draw debug lag markers. We want some camera lag. We don't want any rotation lag because this spring arm isn't rotating at all. We just want the camera to lag behind the spring arm a little bit. And you'll see how this works in just a second. If we leave this camera speed at 10 and the camera lag max distance at zero, and we compile this here, we can close this blueprint, play it, and you'll see it looks just a little bit smoother. Our camera isn't following immediately. It's just giving it a little space to move on. And the reason I'm leaving this camera lag max distance at zero is because if we were to set this at something like 500, you can see that once it reaches 500 units, then we snap to that position and we're constantly following it at 500 units away. And this is easier to see if we come over here and draw debug lag markers. You'll see this little yellow line and sphere. The line will turn red when it's at its max distance. We can come back to spring arm here, disable the debug lag markers, and I'm actually gonna up this camera lag speed to 20. The higher the value, the faster it will try to snap to place. The lower the value, the more lag there will be. We can compile this once again and close this, and there we go. Now our camera will always be following our player no matter what. But there's one thing that looks a little bit strange. You can see there's a little bit of a blur between the cube and the floor. And that's because of the amount of motion blur that we have in our camera right now. This is actually a post-process thing and definitely something for a later day. But for now, come over here to our main camera blueprint, double click on this to open it, come over here to our viewport, click on our camera component in the components here, and we can go ahead and search for motion blur. And you can see under post-process rendering features, we have motion blur and a bunch of details for that. Well, I'm gonna enable three things here, amount, max, and target FPS. By default, the target FPS is 30, and that's gonna make it look a little bit choppier or blurrier, at least in my opinion. This may be different based on how your PC renders this. I'm gonna just change this to 120 because that's what the editor likes to run at. I'm also gonna change this max amount to one and the amount by default down to zero. You can mess with these values if you'd like. This is just the one that I found that worked best for this game. We can close this and hit play. And now you can see it looks very snappy and smooth right against the ground. However fast our player is moving, we set this back to its default 50. It still looks just as crisp. And there we go. Now our camera will follow our player no matter what. We can also extend this ground a little bit if we wanted to see a little bit better, something like maybe 500. And then we could drag a couple more cubes in here, just fill out our scene a little bit. One thing you'll notice though, is that if we fall off the map, nothing happens. And if we bump into things, we just kind of bounce and keep going. There's also no win state. And these are a few different things that we'll be covering over the next couple videos. So stay tuned for that. In the next video, we're gonna be making things happen when two objects collide, such as our cube hitting an obstacle in the scene. It's a pretty straightforward concept, but it may not be easy if you don't know what to look for. But don't worry, we'll be tackling that next time. And now, just like last time after your movement, you actually have a playable game. And the more we go, it's gonna feel better and better. So even though it may be hard at times and may not make sense at all times, keep programming, and I'm excited to see what you guys can create out of this. Thank you guys for the incredible support throughout this series, and I hope to see you in the next one.